Welcome back everybody, I'm Kalani, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about and helping you understand how to design a product, a curriculum, it could be a book, it could be a video, it could be a live course or a presentation. So if you are interested in designing anything, whether it doesn't have to be a product, it could be just, you know, somebody asked you to give a presentation or do a workshop, or you're an author or you're, you want to write a book or do some sort of product, uh, or you're going to be uh, making videos like a channel like this, doing this. If you're going to design anything that other people are going to learn from you, you know, you're designing some sort of, we can call it a curriculum, we can call it a product, whatever, then you're in the right spot. So I'm going to be talking about all of that from my years and years and years of experience and giving you some uh, real life uh, experiences because I want to help you guys. I have, you know, questions from my patrons and I also get I also get people sending me products and they're like, oh, I have this book, you know, I'm almost done with this book. Would you take a look at it? Uh, and I'm happy to do that. And I want to give you guys some advice, all right, before you write the book, all right? Don't send me a book after you've written it. <laughs> Let me give you some advice before you create your presentation, before you make the video, before you write the book. That's the time to listen to this, all right? So we're going to take a little bit of time now. I'm going to go through, I'm going to give you about five different categories or points that I want you to consider when you're going to embark on this journey, all right? And I'm doing it right now, right? This is me teaching you. So hopefully I'm checking all these boxes. All right, number one, who is your presentation for? I'm just going to call it a presentation. It could be a book, video, whatever, workshop, anything. Who is it for, all right? This is sales 101, but it's also writing books and presenting things 101. Who's it for? You have to understand that because what I see as a, it's a big mistake people make. I've done it a bit. I try not to do it anymore. We're all excited about stuff, right? I learn things. I think of things. I come up with ideas, probably too many. Uh, and then I think, oh my God, this is so amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to write a book about this, right? That is the exact opposite. <laughs> if you want to sell books, I mean, if you just want to document stuff, that's fine, but that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about helping people. So if you, uh, you have a lot of ideas, that's fine, but think about who is your presentation for, all right? That is the number one question. Got to start there. I, I know some of you know this already. More importantly, what is it, and more specifically, what is it that you're going to help them do? You know, what is the thing they're going to get? And related to that, of course, what are some of the challenges and the problems and the barriers you're going to help them overcome to get to the thing, right? And you can see there's a lot of videos online now and books and things. And you can look at it in, in terms of two ways, right? People either want to move towards something or they want to move away from something. They want to move towards comfort, prosperity, money, achievement, skill acquisition. You know, they want to move towards the things they want and they want to move away from wasting time, hitting snags, having problems, having to redo stuff, blah, 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 right? So you can, you can sort of talk about whatever it is you, you're going to do in both ways, all right? You know, you see a lot of videos now like, don't make these mistakes, right? That's valid. We don't want to make mistakes. <laughs> so I'll, I'll click on a video that says these are the most common mistakes people make when they're trying to do X, Y, Z. Um, but I also want to click on the video that says these are the things you should do when you're trying to do X, Y, Z. All right. So enough on that. That is, though, related to who is this for? All right. I just touched on this, but I'm going to put it as the second point in this talk, which is what are they going to achieve? You know, what are the skills, competencies, knowledge, whatever they're going to uh, take away from your presentation? And that could be a short video or a medium length video like this one, medium long. Uh, it could be a book. It could be a series. It could be workshops. It could be a whole series of workshops, whatever it is. But understand 
what it is you know that you're starting with what are they going to start as what are they going to end as that's important to be able to communicate and just choose you know you've, you we don't want to try to do everything for everyone i'm going to talk about this as we go through but i'm mentioning that now it's important because when people consume something they usually have a certain goal right i know when i watch videos or i get a book or i you know go to a blog or something I want to, I'm going there because I just search for something specific. I want that topic. I don't want everything that the person knows about everything, right? Uh, sure, it's great to include options, maybe some links and blah, blah, blah. But that's what we're talking about right now is scope. And we'll, we'll get to that in a second also. Well, actually, let's just get to it right now. <laughs> we're talking about scope, right? What is included? in the whole presentation and that is so important because you guys again i know how easy it is to spin off and get on this topic oh and that reminds me and then this and that oh yes and you should i'm not and here's another thing i know right like have you ever watched a video or you see a you get a book and you're just like okay well this person just knows a lot of stuff obviously but what's in it for me i picked it up for this reason that's what i want to get all right. So really think about yourself as a consumer. Why would you get a book or watch a video or go to a program? Now, when you're designing, that that's what those people are thinking. They're coming to you or they're buying your product. They're consuming your stuff. Uh, for what reason? You need to know. Now, how do we know? Some people ask. I like to ask people. I do it. Do a survey. Uh, what do you guys want? We know, do some research. What are the most popular books on this topic? What are they, you know, how do they work? What are they doing? Who's doing what out there? You know, who's having the most success? And of course, that's just kind of business 101 marketing. Again, you know, we see that a lot of something successful. We see a lot of pop-ups just replicating. But I'm not suggesting that you do that. I'm saying that if you have a scope of knowledge, you can do this and this and this and this. Just pick something based on, you know, the feedback you're getting, the questions that you ask people and what they tell you. That's just good research. All right. Do your due diligence. Okay. So scope, we have to consider what's going to be included and then don't include other stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I have... I have had to trim, I've probably trimmed more stuff out of books that I've written than end up in the book, all right? And if you end up with that, you know, good for you, because I think that points to discipline and it points to the fact that, yeah, I could, I could talk about this, but I'm not going to because they don't need to know that. They don't need that. That's not why they're coming here. So don't talk about this over here. Don't talk about this over here. <laughs> talking about this. All right. Here's an important one too. Um... And this, again, relates to who is your consumer, who's your customer, uh, because ultimately that is the important question, is what are the prerequisites or, you know, recommended knowledge base, experience base, skill set, um, maybe it's members of a certain profession, right? Like I teach music teachers a lot of the time, or I might teach music therapists, or I might teach um, people from the community that are drumming, right? That they already know about drumming. Um, but whichever population I'm going to address, I'm going to create some presentation for, I know because I'm a member of those communities, I know what pretty much their, you know, base level knowledge, right? I already know the language. I know what they need to know to become whatever title they have, right? Whatever profession they are. I know that. So I know if I make something for music teachers um, that they're going to understand things like scale, pitch, rhythm, you know, form. They're going to understand some of the terms. And we're going to talk about that in a second too, jargon. Um, but I also know what their skill set should be. So I can start, you know, on letter E of the alphabet or F. I don't have to start at A. Now, obviously, there's a lot of stuff out there for total beginners, right? Or dummies. <laughs> uh, and those are popular series. They're po it's popular. It's the biggest market, right? It's the bottom of the pyramid. You start, you know, you have the most people don't know anything about most things or a certain topic and they want to learn. And that's great. So if it's beginners, great. You know that. You start with absolutely no 
prerequisite. But there are a lot of people out there that do know things that are members of an established community of uh, people, you know, professionals or people that are into a certain hobby, whatever it is. Uh, and then you're going to choose where along that, you know, continuum of skills and knowledge you're going to start your particular presentation. All right. It makes sense, right? So that's just, you know, something that you want to uh, choose, but also something you need to communicate to the people who are going to show up. What are the prerequisites? What do you need to show up with? Because if you don't do that, if you don't communicate that and you don't stick to it, you could, and again, I'm speaking from personal experience. If you just have, uh, let's say you're doing a workshop and it's just open to everybody and you've got some professionals that show up, you've got some recreational level people, and then you got some newbies who are like, oh, that sounds like fun. I think I'll look at, see what that is. You've got some people that are going to be lost, maybe. You're, if you start using words that are, you know, vocabulary to a, a specific profession, they're, the newbies are not going to know any of that. At the same time, your professionals are going to be looking at their watch like, when are we going to get, when are we going to get to the stuff that I know, like, I already know all this stuff. And then you really, and I'm serious, you guys, you, you are going to end up with a lot of people who are disappointed in you. <laughs> all they're, they're not going to understand that you're trying to, you know, you're trying to serve everyone. You can't do that because you're going to end up serving no one. You know, maybe maybe a couple people, ten <laughs> percent uh, out of everybody. All right. So really, it behooves us all that you have a you have a good understanding. You have an understanding of who your customer is, but then you communicate to them that you know who they are. All right, and and you know, and let them know. So that way, also, if people show up to a workshop, for example. And they're like, I don't understand. You know, you can say, look, it says who should show up. <laughs> it says for professionals or, or people in this. And you could give them resources, you know, say, look, I, sorry that you're feeling lost. Let me point you to some resources that you can hopefully, you know, do some remedial work when you get back home. But um, all right. So enough on that. So that's just, you know, communicating prerequisites. And that was number four. Now, the last category is kind of a catch all. So I'm just calling this considerations. All right. I've got a few things. I want to go a little bit deeper into one of them that I mentioned earlier, which is language, vocabulary, and I'll use the word jargon. All right. Jargon, and um, I'll, I'll just call it author-specific or instructor-specific language, is really tricky. Now, I know from my own, my own writing and my own experience in, in both creating content, you know, creating books and teachings, that I have created my own, you know, language um, and acronyms. Don't we love those acronyms? Um, I also know that uh, as an attendee of different people's workshops, you know, that I've I've been on the consumer side of that, and it's tricky. Um, acronyms can be good, but you know, if people don't know what the acronym means, it means nothing. All right, you need to know, or you just don't know. <laughs> Jargon is the same way. Um, a lot, there's a lot of jargon that tends to get developed within a community. Uh, you need to uh, get a sense for, is the person who's consuming your product a member of that community? Are they un going to understand the terms? Because I don't know about you guys, but it's very, again, it's, it's just kind of annoying and tedious to have to keep flipping back to an appendix, looking up terms, you know, going back and forth. It's just not... It's not smooth. It's not, and, it, and you feel kind of annoyed. I do anyway. I'm like, can you just say what it is instead of using like your special word that you came up with? So here's my advice to you as an author or creator. If you can communicate the idea using existing plain ass language. Yes, I just said that. <laughs> if you could just use plain language, just do that. You don't have to brand, and let's face it, a lot of this, a lot of the jargon stuff is branding by the whoever is doing the workshop because they, you know, they want, I guess they want to feel special or they want people that show up to feel special. And it's also a way for, and I'm being totally honest right now, and we all know this, I'm just going to say it. It's a way for people to kind of brand their participants. And because if I give you a bunch of special words to use and then you go off and you start using your special words, you're going to feel special. 
the people who came to the workshop are going to feel special because they're like in the in, you know, they're in the know. But it's kind of like, I don't, I don't really see the value in that uh, personally. And it's just a slippery slope. So be careful with the acronyms, the jargon, the special words. <laughs> just, just use plain language. All right. That, that's my advice. You're going to, you're going to, well, it's going to be more welcoming and more inclusive if you do that. Um, another point is what we're just going to call, or I'll call procedure or process. Obviously, if you're going to be teaching something, um, you know, there's a beginning, there's a step one, step two, step three, and bam, now we're over here, right? So if I'm teaching songwriting, I might start with, well, okay, let's look at what a song is. What are the elements of a song? We've got music, we've got chords, we've got a rhythm, we've got a beat, we've got lyrics, we've got form, we've got a melody. Uh, there's different ways of harmonizing the melody. Um, now, let's, uh, let's pick one of those areas and we'll look into that a little bit. Um, how do we come up with lyrics? You know, are we going to get them from a poem? Are we going to get it from a personal story? Are we going to pick a theme and we'll just talk about it? What are we going to do? We're going to put a bunch of words in a hat, start pulling them out. Uh, so we're going to dive deeper into the specific topics and then we'll build, right? We're going to add things back together. And at the end, here's our song. And we understand the elements of songwriting, just as an example. So everything has a process. Now, that is more of a personal call, but I'm just bringing it up because whenever you pick a topic, a subject, you'll find that um, I like to use the word holographic, right? Meaning that you can look at something from multiple angles and it will look whole. Um, however, you can, you can enter into something uh, from any point, right? There isn't necessarily, you know, topics don't come laid out in... <laughs> In a timeline. That's not how things are, right? Anything we do is multidimensional. It's multifaceted. You can think of it as a crystal too, or like a diamond, right? You can look in any facet and get to the center, but you know, which, so how do you want to get there? There's different ways. Um, I have my own particular style with, that I've developed over many, many years. I like to, for example, get people into an experience First, before I'm yapping, 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 yammering and talking, <laughs> I like to give people an experience because I feel like the, the way people learn is from their own experience. And that even if people don't understand why or what they're doing, if they do something, at least I know that they've got it, an intimate understanding of whatever they just did. And then we can kind of talk about it and do the explaining later and do the breakdown later. Um, and then they'll at least they'll be able to say, okay, oh yeah, 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 because I did do that, right? So at least if you're using words at that point, um, they can connect it with something. All right, that's just my preference. But there are a lot of ways to teach things. There's not one perfect way. So you, you know, that is on you in your teaching style, whatever you think is best. But I recommend doing first, <laughs> talking way later. <laughs> Maybe do something and then do something else and then do it again. Um, write a poem about it, write a song, then talk about it. All right. Um, related to scope, again, I just want to bring up this point is how much information is the right amount. And I want to give you an example of a couple books that I wrote. My first book, which was this, it's called All About Congas. Look how thick it is, or thin. It's a small book. It's just small. It came with a CD-ROM thing, enhanced CD. Uh, it cost like 20 bucks. Well, it, it was a few years ago. Um, it sold pretty well. It was a good book. And when you look at that book, it's like, what is it about? Yes, it's about the Congas. It's all about Congas. And it's just basic, right? It's for the beginner. Sold pretty well. This book called West African Drum and Dance is amazing. This book is awesome, you guys. It is in depth, all right? It has dances, rhythms, um, recipes. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? It's got video, it's got DVDs. Uh, it's got so much. It's got history, background. It's got video footage from West African villages. It's teaching songs drumming, dances, rituals, like a whole arrangement. 
It did not sell well. <laughs> I wish it did. It's an amazing book. I'm so proud of this book. What's the lesson there? Uh, and it also costs a bit more. All right. The lesson is that e even it, when you can deliver something, right? Like my co-author Ryan and I delivered what I think is an amazing product. It's just so good, right? It's so solid. It's so well thought out. <laughs> It's too much. It was too much for people, all right? The, the, the consumer, we we're kind of aiming at like elementary music educators, maybe middle school. And it's just not what people are looking for. I'm going to be honest, you know, it's a great book. Some, the people who get it and who get into it love it, but it just overshot the mark, I think. It was a little too expensive for the market. Uh, they weren't used to spending, people aren't used to, used to spending that much probably just didn't, weren't looking for something so in depth. Um, so I'm gonna say that we didn't necessarily ask the right questions at the beginning. Like who is our, who is our customer exactly? What is their skill set coming in? You know, what do they need? What are their goals? Um, there you go. I'm just, again, I'm just being honest. It's a wonderful book, no question. And I know many people out there who can write amazing books, but that's not the point or they can do amazing workshops. The point is, who are you doing it for and what do they need and what do they not need? So you guys just really, uh, my best advice is if you're gonna do something, pick one topic, maybe one goal, couple goals, and just do something short and sweet and see how it goes. You can always put things in collections later, but just keep it focused, you guys. Um, I also want to just touch quickly on the whole anecdote kind of angle too. Now look, I can talk just with the, I can go on and on yammering, obviously, <laughs> with the best of them. But uh, I've bought books before on a certain topic and I'm reading the book, going through the book and I'm like, okay, how many stories are we going to have now before we get to the stuff that I want to like? you know, the stuff I, I want to learn because it's fine to tell a story, to have an anecdote, right? To, to bring to life a certain idea or concept, but it, you can go overboard with that stuff. Um, and again, as an author, you know, you might be super excited about going over, like telling stories, but telling stories is, you know, the, the, your audience was not there. They don't know all the stuff you're talking about. Only you know that, right? You're remembering things and people and going to places. And sure, if, if you're a good storyteller, I suppose, you know, you can describe things and it's great, but we're not, people aren't necessarily buying your book at, so they can have a bedtime story. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, getting back to the thing, what is in it for me? All right, so just keep that in mind. Keep your anecdotes to a minimum. I think anecdotes are great as an illustration, but they should be quick. And again, like think about why you're telling this story. Is it adding value or is it just, oh, I remember this thing, so I'm gonna put it in there and talk about that because I had a great time in this story, right? All right, um, we're getting to the end. Hang on there. So um, think about the technology that's involved with creating um, or you know delivering your particular presentation what are the methods? What are the tools? What are the, what's the tech? Um, it used to be, of course, when I started with VHS tapes, you know, like I said, it used to be, I had to shoot the thing, edit it, get a master, go to a duplicator and have it all printed. So I was printing covers. I was buying tapes. I was having them replicated. I'm shipping stuff all over, you know, da, 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 da. It's a lot. Um, but that was part of the technology of delivering the product. So if it's a book, same thing, publishing, even doing uh, tablet stuff, computer stuff, there's a certain amount of technology in just getting it out there. Now, um, so think about that. And also if it's a live workshop, what do people need? What's this, what space requirements do you have? What do people have to bring, et cetera? Um, I wanna back up for one second and talk about, well, actually we're gonna move forward and I'm gonna back up at the same time. We're gonna talk about cost. Now, cost is a factor. When you put um, everything you know or a lot of stuff into a book, 
the cost goes up, especially if it's a book because you got more pages. I mean, it's just physically bigger, costs more. Heavier, shipping costs more. Wider, shelf space. All right? The consumer, um, there, there is a cost, right, to get the product. Let's just stay on the book for a second. The book costs more. Okay, fine. I'm willing to spend the money on the book. But what you're also doing when you write a, li a long book or you have, you know, a big set of presentations, like a lot of videos that people are going to purchase, for example, is you're also increasing their personal cost in terms of time and energy. All right. Time is money, you guys. So think about your customer. Think about what they need and think about what they don't need. Because if you require them to watch, you know, 200 hours of video or buy a 400 page book, you know, that could be a turnoff for some people. For some people, they might love it. But for most people, think about yourself, right? Most people want to get in, get it, get out. <laughs> they want to get what they want to get with the, it, for the least amount of money for the least amount of time. Again, I'm being honest, right? So just don't, you don't have to throw the kitchen sink in to every, to every product. And I'm going to wrap up with going back to the very first thing, because I, I know this from experience and I know it from seeing some of the things that my peers have done. Um, we all get excited about the stuff that we know, right? And the things we're passionate about. And that's awesome. That's what drives us to, you know, to excel and to become educators or teachers or presenters. However, we need to remember that not everyone is excited about the same stuff we're excited about, all right? In fact, I know they're not. So really go back to that fundamental question, who is your consumer? You know, who are you doing this for? Who are they? And why are they coming to you? And what are you gonna help them do? What, are you gonna, what problems are you gonna help them avoid and just do it in a way that is the most, the straightest path, the most economical, uh, the least stressful, and just simple, you know? Avoid the jargon, avoid all that stuff. Don't get wrapped up in your own, you know, language and, oh, I thought of another word, I'm gonna use that, you know? It's clever, right? I, I, I like to think of myself as clever. I love, you know, puns and, and combining words and coming up with my own stuff. Nobody needs it. <laughs> it's totally unnecessary. All right. It could be fun, but it's unnecessary. Let's be honest. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap up. Um, if you'd like to continue this dialogue with me, or you'd like to learn more, you can do that right here at patreon.com slash Kalani. Uh, we are a community supported channel, of course, and um, take advantage of it. If you like, a lot of people do. But if this, uh, if you decide not to, that's fine. Uh, maybe just leave a nice comment down below. That'll be helpful. Hit the subscribe button while you're here. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps us. And hit the bell if you like notifications if I'm dropping other videos. Um, I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for stopping in, you guys. I appreciate it. And good luck with all your projects. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Send me a message. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.